This is a piece of old technology. Garmin 350, the first came out in 2005. The original retail was 900 bucks for it. Then they went down to 350 and then 250 on a good day with a good sale. And then they went out of production. Now you can buy them for 10 bucks, for 5 bucks, sometimes get them for free. I got this one for free from a friend. And the problem with old uh, GPS will be that the battery doesn't hold any charge at all. And so is the case with this one. Uh, I have connected it to an original Garmin power supply. And as soon as I disconnect the power, the screen goes black. So I'm going to replace the battery and I'll show you what I did. I did not get original or original replacement or anything like that. I just got a cheaper 600 milliamp hours battery. I need it only for the car. And the reason I prefer using this to a telephone is first of all, I don't have to worry about charging, connecting the phone. I don't have to worry about this charge. Uh, the telephone will discharge much faster when the GPS is on and it traces the, the road. And second reason is that you let the big brother know where you drive, where you stop, how fast you drive and so on. So if you don't like that, and in some countries this uh, may actually be wise thing not to let big brother know what you do in your vehicle, where you travel and uh, details of your travel. So a GPS, old-timey GPS may be good. Uh, if you buy one of these, make sure that you get the clip, the holder clip in the back, because this part is essential uh, to have it mounted to the windshield. If you don't have that, it's going to become a challenge uh, to mount it. Now I'm going to take it apart, and to do so, I need to use a Torx T5, tiny Torx for these two screws. Then there are two more screws underneath, under the hinge. And then it, once I open it up, there's another screw on the printed circuit board. I'm using an inexpensive set of screwdrivers. They have all kinds of sizes, miniature sizes, and I already removed the two. Once the screws are removed, you can open it up gently and tilt part of the box like this. And that way you'll have access to the little spring. And to be able to move the spring out of the way, use some kind of a hook. This one is perfect little claw hook that I got from an arts. And all you do is just move it in and, and move it that way. So the spring will let the hinge on this side release. And you can see that the hinge is on its way out. And what I do now is very gently lift just this part lift it up and I want to keep the other side of the hinge close to the GPS because that part has the ribbon so you really want to be careful with that part and this is the spring that holds the GPS against uh, this edge. Now if you lift it up you can see that there is a couple of little screws right here in the corner. There's one, there's another one. So I'm going to unscrew them right now. Now these screws are also T5 Torx. Uh, they are a little longer. Now I'm flipping the antenna to the side very gently and use my T5 little screwdriver to unscrew, unscrew this one here. And you can see that these are much longer than the ones in the antenna. There you go. It's a much longer screw. Now the spring, this part with the hinge and the spring you want to put it aside. Uh, you don't want to lose any of your, of your parts or get them ro rolling on the floor. And now uh, I will, for security, just put everything back like this, so I don't have to worry about ripping off the cable. And I'm going to open the box, open the enclosure. I found that once you remove the screws, the four screws here, the best way to open the enclosure is put the antenna back. So that way you don't have to worry about 
straining or ripping off this uh, little ribbon cable. You can use plastic cards uh, like these gift cards to open it up and you should be able to uh, crack open this case. So here's the connection and this is the bottom part of the screen where the logo, the Garmin logo is. So you can flip it like this. Now you have a couple of connectors. You want to remove that cable from the antenna and to do so all you do is flip upwards that little white uh, plastic part. And to do that I recommend using something pointy. I'm going to use this little claw hook which I sharpen to, uh, to be nice and small and I'm going to lift up that holder of the of that cable. You can see that I flipped that part upwards. Now I can remove the cable from its uh, socket right here. It will come out. You can see that this is moving and will very gently come out. You just have to be extra extra patient and extra gentle with these parts. You don't want to rip off anything or destroy anything in the process. So I'm going to just move it up and uh, make sure that this is out. Here you go. Now once this is out I can remove the antenna and again slowly gently you don't want to force or pull anything and this will go aside. Now to be able to remove disconnect the battery I'll have to remove the printed circuit board which is held by a single screw and this is PZ0, POSI0 size. So I have uh, in this little set the all kinds of sizes. So it was Torx 5 and PZ0, POSI0. Now once you remove that screw uh, you can move the screen upwards a little bit and again be very careful with the ribbon cable. You don't want to do any damage to it. Uh, but now I'll have to pry the printed circuit board from the bottom and again I'm going to use the claw hook uh, to insert it here to the edge and very gently lift it up. Now you can see that the board is lifted up one edge of it and I'm going to flip it again to the other side and I want this board to be moved like that so this way I don't have to worry about the strain on the cables and now I can see there is a speaker wire, the blue one and then black and red is the connector to the batteries. Now the battery connector is removed but it's also wise to remove the speaker connector now since I have to pry the battery. This is glued with some kind of a double sticky tape to the case. Now you can see that this battery after so many years it's really stuck to the... there you go. Now it's unglued and removed from the case but this was a challenge to pull it off. So this was the original Garmin battery and I'm going to replace it with one of these batteries and you can see how the size is somewhat smaller. However this will be sufficient. Now you can see the difference in size. So this was made by Samsung which uh, is famous for good quality and the original capacity was 1250 milliamp hours. And this connector I'm going to cut off the cable right there and save it connected to the new battery. Now the New one is smaller and this is only 600 uh, milliamp hours. However, uh, this will be perfectly sufficient. It's smaller in size, will be easy to put in. And this came with the cables uh, protected with pieces of tape so they don't get shorted. And I'm going to solder uh, these two cables to that so that way I can simply replace it. I soldered the old connector to the battery and put a couple of heat shrink tubing uh, to make sure that these never get shorted, get in contact with each other. So this is the important part. Whatever you do you have to make sure that this is isolated in a way that will prevent ever uh, to touch the connecting point uh, one to another. Uh, and this is uh, ready to be placed back. So I'm going to reconnect the speaker, the battery to the 
print that circuit board and then connect the board. Uh, put the screw back and reconnect everything. When you reconnect the speaker and the battery, make sure you put them in the proper place. And you have the little battery inscription on the printed circuit board in the corner. And this is where the battery goes in, right here. And this socket is for the speaker. So make sure you don't connect them in the wrong sockets. When you align the printer circuit board uh, before you before you put the screw in, make sure that the socket for the power, the USB, and the headphone socket are in place. So once you have that aligned, the screw should go right in, and this is it, just single screw. Now the reassembly goes in reverse, a little hole. That'll be for the, the antenna ribbon cable this little thing so this has to go inside and once you have that inside all you do is reconnect that thing back to the put it in the little socket uh, that we here you go now it's on it's a little awkward to hold the camera and explain but this ribbon has to go back back into this little socket here now the little ribbon is secured in the socket and what I can do is flip it back, close the case and you remember there are two screws underneath and then two screws for the antenna on the other side. So I'm going to do them right so now. So the new battery is installed and uh, everything is put together. I'm going to turn it on for the first time. And I'd recommend resetting it also when you, after you turn it on, there's a reset button to hit it. Uh, just in case if there's uh, any kind of problem, the reset may always work. So let me hit the button for the power. Here you go, it's on. Now this is the new battery and you can see that the charge is very low. This is uh, shipped with about 30, 20, 30% 30 charge. So now it needs to be fully charged before it can be put in a car and operated. However, uh, this is working and uh, uh, this is the end of the presentation.